This is a painting of downtown East Hampton taken from a small park on an island between several streets. Um, you'll note in this painting I started with right from the block in and I'm trying a neutral canvas painted in uh, gray gesso. Uh, normally I block in with acrylics to get rid of all that white canvas. Uh, a lot of times I use in um burnt sienna mix. Um, I'm just trying several methods to see which is the best for me. Um, whether there's a big difference in the color intensity on the finished product, independent of um, what you're using for your initial treatment of the canvas. And here, the blocking is actually being done with the oils, which has advantages and disadvantages. I can get closer to my shades. Um, you get smoother surface, you know, where the sky is concerned and, and many other things. Uh, disadvantages, if you're painting in layers, usually it takes uh, anywhere from eight hours to the next day to start painting over the initial blocking. Acrylics, uh, I wait usually an hour or so. As long as it's dry, you're ready to go. So there are advantages and disadvantages to the different methods. I've begun my second pass here. Um, you can tell the trees are starting to pick up a little detail. Um, this photo was taken in late September, so some of the trees have started to turn, and that'll become apparent as I go on. And right now, I'm starting to add detail to the buildings. Another thing I do is uh, in this picture, when you look at the horizon, it's near white because of the thin clouds. Um, I've noticed, and I've done this in two, three paintings now. You look closely at the horizon, your camera may pick it up, but there's also a touch, I'd say burnt sienna to the sky, very faint. I believe what I'm looking at those type of horizons is uh, probably air pollution. Uh, maybe just this coloration from dust particles, uh, but I've started adding a near white, a um, touch of blue, and a small touch of burnt sienna to the mix. And I'll do that horizon just above the buildings an inch or two with that tone and feather into the rest of it. And I think to the eye, when I look at it, the before and after, I see just an extra touch of warmth to that horizon. And I'm doing that right at this moment. And yeah, you can see the touch of uh, burnt sienna in that horizon right now. As the video progresses, you see where I blocked in uh, three major areas where the trees are more solid uh, than not. And I'll add uh, touches of blue color to that, those areas later to break them up. Um, but the sky in reality is covered with a lot of leaves. Um, and you'll see that as I get to that point in the video. Um, the video, because it's a street scene, I think uh, there were 10 vehicles all together. I mean, they're small. A um, couple are just partial videos because they're parked at the very edge of the, the screen. But they actually took a 
three hour session, maybe two hours to get all those vehicles in there, the shadows that they cast. This is a uh, early morning picture. And um, there's an old pickup truck by the building on the right, which is a, a bank. Another vehicle in the parking lot there at the very right. And um, there's the, there's the grass. I believe I was using a stiff fan brush for that and a flat uh, straight br edge brush. One that's fairly worn so that it gives a nice grass effect. I've started adding um, extra leaves along the sky uh, and clumps on uh, both sides uh, with a mixture, basic black mixture, ultramarine blue and uh, burnt umber, and then added um, yellow ochre and cad yellow to the mixture, to make a very dark near black green. And then I bring that those tones up with the. Uh, various uh, the yellows, a uh, touch of white here and there. Then I'll add uh, cad red to vary the shades of those leaves. The tree was interesting. Uh, it's so very close to get the effect of bark, I decided to scrape various tones of uh, brown and grays onto those areas of the tree where the sun was shining into it. And uh, it worked very well. See that in a minute. And also, the shade of the trees. I basically took a bluish black mixture and scrubbed that onto the ground over the grass and all that. And if you mix it with a little liquid and a little thinner, that color will uh, allow what's been previously painted to show through. And here you see how well the bark turned out, scraping it on with a palette knife. In actuality, <coughs> the two knives I use quite a bit are old Bob Ross uh, knives from, oh, probably the 80s, 90s, somewhere in there. Yeah, but it gives a great effect. Uh, I couldn't get that look any other way. And I'm adding final details to the small gazebo at the end and touches of highlights here and there. But the painting's basically finished at this point. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to give me a like and subscribe.